Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevin Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today we are going to talk about payer portals. We're going to talk about how you get them or access to them, if you will, why they're important and how you can utilize them to your best benefit in your practice. So payer portals is a place where your staff and yourself can log in to find out about a patient's eligibility status, benefits, claim status, reimbursement for past paid claims. And it's a centralized place that you're kind of on the back end or inside of the insurance to help you be able to understand the services you're offering to patients and how they'll be reimbursed or or if a patient is even covered for that service. Depending on your specialty, you're going to utilize these payer portals differently, but everyone, no matter your specialty, is gonna to want to make sure that your staff has access to these payer portals. You only need access to the payers in which you accept those patients. So if you don't accept, I don't know why you wouldn't, but let's just, for example, say a United Healthcare or Blue Cross Blue Shield patient insurance in your office, then you wouldn't necessarily need access to those sites because you're not going to be seeing and sending out a lot of claims for those payers. But if you are in network and providing services to patients who have certain insurances, then you want to have access to those sites. There are some sites that you can access with one login, one password, and you can go to multiple different payers sites within that site to find all this information. But then there's other ones, usually the smaller or local plans that you're going to have to actually have individual logins and information per payer. Now this can get cumbersome, it can be a lot of different sites, and it's hard a lot of times for staff to be able to track user logins and passwords because everybody should have their own login information and access the site only using their own individual information. They shouldn't be sharing it with anybody. You shouldn't have one login that a whole department uses. Everyone should always have their own. That's best practice, that's HIPAA. I mean, you don't wanna put yourself at a high liability for any kind of issues. So the best practice is that everyone should have their own individual individual logins. That should be in your policies and procedures. And you should maybe try to provide your staff with ways of tracking that so they aren't just writing it down and leaving it by their computers. That's a huge no-no and ways for them to be able to remember what their logins are or what their passwords are and how often they have to be changed because they will prompt them to change them often. And you wanna make sure that your staff isn't wasting a ton of time tracking down that information when they could be using that time to actually get into the payer portal, get the information they need, and then communicate it to whomever needs it, whether it's the billing company, the patient, their coworker, et cetera. The payer portals are essential for having having good information at your fingertips without having to call the payer. Now there are times that calling the payer is the best method and you're still going to need to do that, but the wait times are so long usually and it can just be a runaround sometimes that you always want to access the portal first if you can to see if you can answer your questions or needs first in that way. You have more control over it, it's faster access, but like I said, there are going to be times you're gonna have to call and talk to somebody, but this is another resource and a resource that should be used primary versus calling someone unless you know it's a situation where a phone call is necessary. There are, like I said, in different areas, those groups that can be found under one portal. So like in Oregon and Washington, we have one health port and they list all of the payers in the area that you can access information from, from using that 
login credential you've created for One Health Corp. Availity is another one, and I think Availity is nationwide. I think Trizetto is another one that offers like kind of a nationwide access to multiple payers. So definitely want to make sure whom you guys need to access for what. And what I do for my staff is I put a list of all the payers that we accept as a network, and then I put links to the portal of where they can access that information so that they have a resource to go to and go, oh, Moda, okay, I can go to One Health Port for that. Or, oh, Availity, I can go to Blue Cross Blue Shield. And sometimes those multi-access payer sites will have access to the same ones. So like Availity and um, One Health Port, I believe can you can get Aetna and you can get Blue Cross Blue Shield, I think more of the national payers from there. But then there's ones that are only specific to those. And like I said, the small payers are usually gonna have their own, so they need to have those. And you need someone in your office who is going to go through all the payers you accept and find out where their portals are and give instructions to your staff on how to create those login credentials. Sometimes some of the sites, you need someone who's the site administrator and then the administrator will create those accounts for the staff members who need access and it will email them information or you have to provide it yourself after creating it. So all of these payer sites are different. So hopefully you have someone in your practice who is familiar with this and knows the ways of the road, if you will, for the payers and be able to get everyone who needs access set up on that. A lot of payer sites are also places where you would apply for a prior authorization or a referral. So your back office or mid office staff might also need access to these portals and they might need a different kind of access so sometimes when you're setting up their accounts you can choose what kind of access to provide them what information they can and cannot see so it's very specified but you need someone in your office who's familiar with this and can get them set up because it's going to be so beneficial for them to be able to go on and see if a patient's hit their deductible yet for the year and what the deductible is the co-insurance if there's referrals or prior offs required for certain services I mean it provides you with a plethora of of information that is nothing but valuable to you and your practice and your pocketbook. You wanna make sure your staff is accessing it and understanding what the payer portals are for, when to utilize them. So it's really important to maybe have a whole training on this for the person who knows how it all works so that your staff is as efficient as possible and looking out for your best interest and the patient's best interest when it comes to the finances and coverage. The payer portals for Medicare are different depending on your MAC. So whoever administers Medicare for you in your area and you can find that on the medicare.gov or cms.gov website and I will put the link in the description. You find out who your MAC administrator is and then you have to have the accounts created from there. So CMS doesn't actually give you access to a portal, it's through their MAC for your area. So in Oregon, we have Noridian. So we have to go through the Noridian website and we go in, every staff member has to go and create their own login information because it's the government and they have to verify your identity. So people have to fill it out themselves and I just gave them the certain codes they need for the practice or whatever information might be specific to the practice for them to create it for and then they have to go in and do that. And then as the administrator, I go in and accept them once they've created it and I give them whatever permissions that they need. So make sure you know what MAC is in the area because Medicare is gonna be very helpful if you bill any kind of Medicare Part A and or B. If you have Medicare Advantage patients, then you would go to whatever commercial payer offers that Medicare plan. So if it's HealthNet, you go there. If it's Regents, you would go there. And sometimes they have a spin-off payer portal for for their Medicare Advantage plan specifically, but it just depends, AARP for United Healthcare, but they'll walk you through that once you get to the mother portal and it, they'll say if this is an AARP patient or a Medicare Advantage or whatever they call those Medicare Advantage plans in that payer, then they will tell you to go to a separate site. If you have any tips or tricks for your colleagues on how to make it easy for your staff, please leave that in the comments. If you have any experience of trying to train your staff on how to utilize these portals and why they're important, please leave that in the comments as well. If this was helpful, informational, please smash that thumbs up button to help with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for the support. I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.